Hey friends, my name is Aki Dearis. So the Ghibli franchise is quite the gem in the anime and otaku community. With every film comes a new adventure, and with every new adventure comes a new message. And with every new message, there comes another person waiting to just rip that apart and change up the entire premise of the story. Today I'm going to share with you guys crazy and disturbing theories and events of 10 different Ghibli films. So let's get right to it. Number one, my neighbor Totoro, the god of death. Being one of Miyazaki's most popular films, legend has it that My Neighbor Totoro is based on what is called the Sayama Incident of 1963. On May 1st, 1963, in Sayama City, within the Saitama Prefecture, a 16-year-old high school girl by the name of Yoshi Nakata went missing on her way from school. Later that night, her older sister, who later committed suicide, receives a ransom note asking to bring 200,000 yen to a place close to her house. As she went to the meeting place, there were police surrounding the area, so the man became suspicious and escaped before police could catch him. A few days later, the young sister's body was found after being raped and killed. So why would this be connected to our loving Totoro movie? One of our main characters of the film Satsuki means the month of May in Japanese, while her younger sister is named Mei which is said in English as the same month. The setting of our film takes place in Tokorozawa City, which is next to Sayama City, the town where the incident took place. This would make a lot of sense to call our setting as My Neighbor. In the beginning of the movie, the box and the old lady is seen labeled as Sayama Tea. Rumor has it that the ransom between the kidnapper and older sister was made in a tea field. When May was kidnapped, the old lady next door finds a slipper near a lake. Fearing that she may have drowned, Satsuki supposedly says that it isn't May's. She then goes to our beloved Totoro pleading for him to bring her to wherever Mei is. So what if Mei actually did drown? Then in a sense, Totoro sets off to reunite our two protagonists in the afterlife. Totoro then takes Satsuki to the cat bus, and before the sign changes to Mei, we see the kanji that translates to path to the graveyard. So I guess we can say that Totoro is our angel of death, and the cat bus is the grim reaper. Satsuki then spots Mei by six Jizo statues. These statues are common in Japan and are very commonly seen in cemeteries, and are believed to protect children in the underworld. At the end of the movie, the sisters are reunited and they sit on a tree with Totoro watching their mother from a distance rather than personally going to see her. Is this implying that they're already dead? The mother then quotes this. Who left this? What is it? I thought I saw Satsuki and Mei smiling at us from up in that tree. It sounds crazy, but maybe you did. Look at this. From Mommy. This could probably mean that the mother could be close to death because of her illness that Miyazaki confirms is tuberculosis, which is also what his mother suffered from as well. The name of the hospital she resides in is named Shichikokuyama, which is inspired by the Hachikokuyama Hospital. So in the end, our urban legend is that Totoro is the base story of the Sayama incident of 1963. Now, Ghibli's already stated that this movie was in no way, shape, or form related to the incident, but I must admit that this urban legend is a very well thought out one and at the very least is hard to unsee once it's been seen. Number 2, Ponyo, Tsunami to Heaven. In the movie presenting the values of friendship, our two protagonists, Ponyo and Sasuke, face a threat to their way of life. It's said that the city was destroyed by a tsunami and that the people actually went to heaven. The tunnel that Ponyo frequently visits is looked at as a path that connects between this world and heaven. And apparently it's why Ponyo automatically turns into a fish when she goes through, which is why she says, I don't like it here. Lastly, the rumor goes to say that elderly people are breathing and dancing underwater because they're already dead and are actually in heaven now. <sighs> All right, I'm just gonna throw my two cents here that clearly the people who made this up just scrapped the ending of the movie altogether. Because if they really took it into account, they'd know that this is pretty contradicting and kinda ruins the entire premise of the urban legend. But I guess just to keep the legend alive, let's just bullshit in and say that Sosuke and Ponyo just decided not to be in heaven and go back to reality. Yeah, this, uh, this urban legend is clearly made for the sake of existing. Number three, Nausicaa on Mars. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't make this title sound any more serious. Okay, so the theory for this one is actually kind of funny in my opinion. The theory for Nausicaa says that apparently the entire movie actually takes place on Mars and that all of the life forms originate from there as well. Since Mars only has a third of the gravitational force as Earth, it apparently makes it easier to use wind as a primary source of energy. On Earth, it's said that humans eventually lost their land and way of living due to being surrounded by the toxic seas and jungles. The wars that took place caused the land to turn into vast deserts and the story of Nausicaa is said to be based on the memories of what happened. Ugh, okay, really? Mars? That's not even remotely interesting even if this was an urban legend. To be honest, that kinda sounds a lot less interesting than the original story itself. They clearly just said it in the movie that they're on Earth. But I don't understand who could have polluted the entire Earth. You discovered this.
Whatever, let's just see what's next. Number four, Grave of the Fireflies, a purgatory nightmare. The legend goes that the movie is more than just the life retelling of Seta and Setsuko's life, but also a story of a never-ending nightmare that the siblings are already dead, seeing their memories over and over again, reliving every wrong turn and every beautiful and terrible thing that led up to their passing. Okay, so the thing about this urban legend is that it's kind of true and already given. We obviously know that Seta and Setsuko in these shots are dead and are watching themselves. That that's just the artistic value in the entire movie. The only thing that is surprising to me that actually didn't cross my mind is the possibility that they are in fact in a repeating loop in purgatory, where they are to forever witness their mistakes. And now that, ladies and gentlemen, is depressing. Just when you think they finally get their peace for being together in the afterlife, they have to go through the same exact thing over and over again for the rest of their lives. Or afterlives, to be exact. And to that, I say, fuck that shit. Number 5, Whisper of the Heart, Suicide Syndrome. Whisper of the Heart is the romantic tale between two teenagers, Shizuku and Seiji, that develop and bloom into a beautiful coming-of-age story. While most adults familiar with this movie watch it with a little bit of nostalgia, some took it a little bit more seriously. Some users in Japan started making forums and discussion boards after the rerun being aired. On these forums, there were groups of people that got together shouting their pain and despair to the world. Now what caused the sudden action, you may ask? Well, Whisper of the Heart was actually released in 1995 in theaters, and almost anyone during that time who went to the premiere were about the same age as the characters. But now, after watching that movie again, that same audience is now reaching their 30s, which is the age where people become more exposed to many cruel realities of adulthood. And let's just say that watching a movie about two adolescent kids developing a romantic relationship didn't exactly make them feel any better about where their lives ended up. Later, a message board thread was then created with the title that translates to Whisper of the Heart Suicide Center. Here, a variety of messages and comments said things like, See you guys in the afterlife, or I feel like I wasted my youth, or even time has passed us by. Number 6, Porco Rosso, The Flight Company. The film of Porco Rosso tells the life of a freelance bounty hunter chasing air pirates in the Adriatic Sea who is cursed into an anthropomorphic pig. Porco Rosso at first began as a short film project for Japan Airlines, but eventually grew into a full-fledged film, though Japan Airlines still became a huge contribution to the film's sponsorship. Now, Miyazaki absolutely loved the scene of flying and destroying other airplanes, but Japan Airlines unfortunately encouraged Miyazaki to remove that scene since they were still in a sponsorship. And and of course, Miyazaki wasn't exactly happy about this. Number 7, Kiki's Delivery Service, The Yamato Controversy. Like Porco Rosso, Kiki's Delivery Service was heavily sponsored by a delivery company named Yamato Transport. The Japanese title for Kiki's Delivery Service is Maho no Takubin. Takubin was actually a word created by the Yamato company when they started out their door-to-door -door service. The logo for Yamato also uses the black cat as its mascot, and the reference is pretty obvious here. Before the movie was created, controversy struck between the Yamato Transport and the original author of the book who used the word Takubin with Without permission. Luckily though, because the movie did so well, Yamato was like, okay, you cool man, you cool, and sponsored the movie. Number 8, Princess Mononoke, The Land of Leprosy. Princess Mononoke follows the struggles between spirits and gods of the forests and the humans who take its resources. Some speculated that the disease that was described in the movie as something incurable was actually Hansen's disease, aka leprosy. There comes a scene where one of the patients describes Lady Eboshi's kindness towards them. You must not take your revenge on Lady Eboshi. She's the only one who saw us as human beings. We are lepers. The world hates and fears us, but she, she took us in. Leprosy was not only a disease within itself, but brought multitudes of discrimination to those infected. This urban legend proved to be somewhat true a few years later. And by a few years later, I mean as of January 28, 2016, Hayao Miyazaki made a speech saying that the disease at the time might not have specifically been identified as leprosy, but does carry out the same suffering as a leprosy brought. He wanted to emphasize the image of people in the world not being able to live normally because of an incurable disease. And how convenient that this was literally just confirmed a few days ago. I didn't even know that we had a World Leprosy Day. Number 9, Castle in the Sky, The Rumored Ending. So at the end of Castle in the Sky where Patsu and Shita cast the destruction spell on Laputa, I mean, 
Laputa. Sorry. The movie ends with all of our characters returning back to Earth and showing what's left of the island. However, the word was that in Japan, when the movie was broadcasted on television, there was an alternative ending. In this ending, viewers said that it contained a scene where Patsu visits Shida in her hometown and another scene showing Shida hiding a crystal in her fireplace. Ghibli officially denied that these endings were ever made and that the people were confused by the illustrations that were shown in a magazine called Animage in the 1985 edition. This magazine held an epilogue to Castle in the Sky six months after the film's release. Number 10, Spirited Away, the insight into the sex industry. One of Ghibli's most popular films takes us into Chihiro's adventure through the spirit world to work for the release of her parents. Although this film does truly remain as a story of a girl finding courage within herself, there does exist a secret backstory to this. And that is the inevitable truth that this movie was actually an allegory for prostitution in Japan. Let's quickly look through the clues here. The first clue is that Chihiro changes her name to Sen. A woman changing her name was very common in the sex industry industry and is still practiced today in brothels of other cultures as well. In Japan, this is called Genjina. In the Japanese version, Chihiro is referred to as a Yuna, which were girls who specifically served men in both washing and sexual play. The bathhouse that plays as a major setting for the film is also a reference to Sento. During the Edo period, these Sento were bathhouses that also offered additional services by selling sex after closing hours to male customers. And the madam that would run these bathhouses was called Yubaba, the name of one of our main antagonists of the film film if you couldn't put that together already. Next, we have No Face, who is a character that takes a particular interest in Chihiro. Now, in the innocent mind, most of us would assume he just takes an interest in her simply because she's the one who led him into the bathhouse. But in the backstory, No Face constantly showers Chihiro with riches such as gold and bath tokens, which symbolizes he wants her virginity, and nothing is more valuable in a brothel than taking a girl's virginity. Adding another scene to this, the scene where the stink spirit is taken care of by Chihiro rewards with a token. This is also to symbolize how prostitution works. Because Chihiro got the job done and took care of him, he rewarded her. When Hayao was asked about this, Miyazaki stated that he believed that the most appropriate way to symbolize the modern world is through the sex industry, and that Japanese society has become like the sex industry itself. It's also weird to think that Spirited Away was originally something Miyazaki came up with while camping with his friends and family. Hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys thought that anything on this list changed your way of looking at any of the Studio Ghibli films, or Studio Ghibli in general, or maybe you thought that some of the stuff on this list was pretty retarded, because to be honest, some of them were actually pretty fucking retarded, then feel free to put it all in the comment section down below, subscribe to my channel for more anime content, and feel free to stalk my ass on any of the social media links that are in the upcoming outro here, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye